Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2, and this is a guest video from MS Bop, aka Maelstrom, who has uh, recreated his uh, golden gem from our Gundam Sankey playthrough as the Jim White Dingo. Um, so he has, you know, pretty much set up for thrust and speed, because, man, that was, uh, that was so much fun. I, the Gundam Sankey playthrough, as much as I recorded of it, is, uh, is on the channel. That's a neat little game. If you can get it for the PS3 for cheap, and you probably can, give it a try sometime, because the, you can really customize your, your mobile suit to that. There, there, it is... A very versatile system, and I think I've got some of his high-speed gun tank on there, too, and that is just a treat. But yeah, you can do all sorts of crazy things in Sankey. It, it is worth seeing. Let's see, there's an Afrit knocked in the neighborhood, and the White Dingo, uh, Bob says he does not have the uh, experimental beam uh, prototype beam rifle uh, for it yet, the, my beloved troll rifle. But it is using the ground-type rocket launcher here. It can also use the ground-type beam rifle. But... He, he says it's uh, it's a little bit of a lateral move from the other ground types at this like, cost level. It's uh, it's a little bit hardier, but, you know, d just not anything particularly extraordinary, though it does have two melee swings, which is handy. And there, there's one of them now, knocking down the gun cannon, which the rest of his team capitalized on handily. And let's see, somebody's on a WAPA, so I'm betting... Ah, they're headed to take a checkpoint, it looks like. And, yeah, that's right, I believe probably the White Dingo, if it's like it was in Battle Operation 1, is one of the few things to have both grenades and head vulcans, other than, say, a gun cannon. Good tackle kill there. And, yeah, it's moving pretty fast, so that is good. And I think there's a uh, Vish Donahue goof. I'm not sure, but... Uh, Ah, I may have a video of that from uh, from uh, Duchess Snow sometime soon. I'm not sure. And there's the Freak Knocked. But yeah, going to be a lot of, uh, since that just came out recently, there's going to be a lot of jamming going on at, at the proper cost levels, I figure. Looks like the Knocked dropped, and from the quick flicker uh, on the checkpoint, probably it, uh, probably it, uh, it, the pilot tried to take the point, but did not succeed. Words. Those were the ones I was looking for. It took a while. A good retreating grenade throw hit both mobile suits. And now, yeah, good time to pull back, help the uh, help the uh, team with the enemies spawning in here, which appears to be about three of them. So, I think that's the Donahue goof because it's using a giant bazooka. So, I'm not sure if it can use the MMP-78 or one of the other Zaku machine guns while it's at it, but... I, you know, I'm glad there is a goof that can use a bazooka and things like that, because, I mean, they are uh, shown doing that in the original series. I'm pretty sure there's one with a giant bazooka, and there's several with Zaku machine guns, so. Plus, you know, it's it's another, uh, it's it's a uh, general goof, and, uh, which is just a nice thing to have. I wonder if there's some uh, some type of, some goof variant we could have as a support. That would be fun. I don't think the goof is really geared for support, but that would actually just make it more entertaining, in my opinion. And, yeah, the, the white dingo seems pretty solid. I definitely want to try it with the special rifle, but I'm saving tokens right now. Haven't been able to play in a couple of days, so it's going to take me longer than I anticipated to get that done. But, yep, two swings. Man, that was a good angle, too. I was not expecting that second one to take. And he managed to tackle an easy eight I didn't even see which was uh, coming in to lunge at him and knock him down. So, nice work. Let's see, managed to forestall a tackle there on, from that Zaku high-mobility ground type. You can tell by the shoulder shield. It's bent instead of, you know, 90-degree angle. So, let's see, I think that's a gun cannon MPT up ahead. Sure looks like... Uh, it, yep, definitely. You can see uh, tell from the, uh, from the vents. And between that and the uh, goof, that is it. Because, yeah, that's... Yeah, I definitely want to try out the gun cannon MPT because it is... It's pretty sharp looking, and it can do a lot of damage. Let's see. Team's got a slim lead. 400 points with with three minutes left. And, but they all just spawned in at once, which is a good position to be in in a situation like this. 
Um, maybe right here is not the best position to be in, you know, totally surrounded, though there are a lot of enemies just sitting here to be stabbing. That's not the bad news. And there's the gun cannon, which... I didn't think it was going to have time to uh, get that shot off, but since he's got an ally working on the gun cannon, he may as well take care of some of these other things. Ifrit got up. Ifrit got stunned. Actually, it's maneuver armor saved it, and, but he's got a good beat on it. Man, that thing's fast. And got the downswing, and it's dead. Got the assist. Okay. Yeah, so they've got a pretty good lead after that little volley. 2,200 points. Not insurmountable for the enemy team, but uh, definitely a good start for them. There's the Donahue Goof again, which, yeah, it can it can Zooka into a uh, Heat Sword pretty neatly. Uh, it uses its own unique uh, heat sword. I don't know if it's physically any different from any other model, but it does. It is. It's got its own. It's got its own damage readings and what all. But you you know how this game does with practically identical weapons with slightly different damage ratings, so so as to uh, you know preserve game balance mostly. Um, Four thousand point lead now, so I think I'm fairly comfortable in saying they've got this. See, still, yeah, I think that's the knock there that's about to die. Yep. And, yep, it's dead. And I don't think he got caught in the explosion, though, which is good. See, yeah, that rocket launcher takes a long time to reload, so it's a good, yeah, good time to be hanging back, but now he's ready to fire again. Um, good time, ow. Good time to get out of the, uh, ow, out of the Juagu's way and see what you can shoot. There's that gun cannon again, so good place to be. And it's already dead. See, he lost his shield. It freaks right there. There's that uh, goof again. So I think at this point we've seen all the major players, and he's wound up against uh, each of them at least once. With a minute left, they've still got about a 3,000-point lead. That's pretty good. Enemy team is making a little headway, but I don't think they're going to catch up. Ah, got caught in the, uh, got caught in the, uh, support fire there, but nothing major. That, uh, the Efreet is pretty well damaged after that, so if somebody can get, uh, get a hold of it, it's gonna die. Managed to get all the checkpoints, and it's academic whether or not the Efreet dies at this point, because again, still, still a 2,500 point lead with 25 seconds, and that's a good place to be in, especially when your entire team has a lot of health. The Juagu is the, uh, lowest health thing, and pretty much anything like close to it is probably not going to be in too much of a position to kill it. Well, I stand corrected, because something must be doing pretty good damage to it in the look of things. But again, even if they just get the Juagu, they're not going to do much in time to uh, win this match. Matter of fact, it's over, and yeah, Maelstrom definitely won. And a good round, so yeah, White Dingo is pretty capable. Um... It's, again, looking forward to seeing its good gun, but in the meantime, very fancy uh, gold gem and a good round all around. So, thank you for that, Bob. And that is going to do it for today's Gun and Battle Operation 2. We'll be back tomorrow with more, so till next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later!